Good afternoon, friends. Happy Tuesday to all of you. Checks will finally begin to be deposited for many Americans. And friends, this is very exciting news. Up to $3,284 is available to be claimed right now by low and middle income households. Benefits for millions of Social Security and senior citizens are also starting to change. And that's due to the Inflation Reduction Act. So friends, please make sure you watch until the end of this video. Also, to say thank you for watching and joining me here every day, I'm giving away four $75 Walmart gift cards every week. Friends, please make sure you enter the giveaways by clicking and liking several of my videos and then commenting below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Uh, the, the underlying reason that I rise to oppose the previous question, so that we may immediately consider H.R. 8749, which is my bill, to strike the new tax on every American, the new tax on natural gas that was included in Democrats' Paycheck Reduction Act. You know, at a time when we actually are witnessing probably the most destructive energy poverty crisis uh, in civilized world, which is happening right now in Europe. In most cases, happening in countries that are now experiencing 10 times, a tenfold increase of their heating bills, a tenfold increase of their energy bills, a tenfold increase of all of the requirements of energy, the most foundational piece of any economy. President Biden is driving an agenda to do the same thing here in the United States, driving an agenda to impoverish the energy needs of this country. And while the President may deny the existence of inflation and crippling price hikes, those of us who are actually buying our own groceries and paying our bills every month know that it is false. And no position in the United States can deny the economic facts. 8.3 percent. That, I believe, pales in comparison to what areas in rural America are actually paying. Price hikes on energy are the largest driver of this inflation by far. Gas utility bills are up 33 percent. Electricity is up almost 16 percent. It's 16 percent more expensive than it was this time last year. In the United States, right now, today, Energy costs are so high that one in six Americans are facing a notice from their electrical company that they may be disconnected. One in six. When I said these words just a couple of months ago, everybody on the other side of the aisle laughed at that proposition. Yet it is the policy that started with the flurry of activity last January, the executive orders that were aimed at killing the industry that underpins our economy, the industry that won World War II, the industry that has lifted one billion people out of poverty, one billion people around the world, in places like Sub-Saharan Africa, the Indian subcontinent, the Far East, one billion people. That's because of the shale revolution. That's because of technology. The Paris Climate Accords have nothing. For months on end, Americans all over the country have been struggling with higher costs of living caused by inflation, and many have had no choice but to dip into their savings or rack up debt on their credit cards just to cover basic expenses like food and utilities. Economists have reported that living costs have remained very high even as the U.S. economy has recovered. Historically, stimulus checks have gone out during periods of rampant unemployment. There are several U.S. states that have been giving out stimulus checks in an effort to help residents cope with the impact of inflation. And this month, residents of one specific state are eligible for up to $3,284 in relief. Alaska residents are used to getting money from their state. They commonly receive a yearly dividend from the state's oil wealth fund. This year, however, residents of Alaska are eligible to receive a payday of $3,284 in the month of October. That is thanks to excess funds in the state's budget. Alaska is able to share that money with residents to help alleviate the burden that inflation has caused. Given that the cost of things like food, 
tends to be higher in Alaska to begin with, given that the cost of things like food tends to be high in Alaska to begin with, with due to its remote location. The fact that the state is giving out generous aid during a period of inflation is wonderful news. Alaska is not the only U.S. state to be sharing excess funds in its budget with its residents. An estimated 21 states across the U.S. have been or plan to give out aid to help ease the burden of inflation. That said, whereas Alaska residents are generally due for the stimulus payment every year, this year's payday in other states may be more of a one-time thing. The hope, though, is that state stimulus payments will do the job of getting residents through this period of inflation until costs of living come down. Meanwhile, Alaska residents who are set to receive payments via direct deposit should receive their money by the end of next month. But those who are signed up to get paper checks in the mail will need to wait a bit longer for their money. Some Alaska lawmakers have been fighting to give residents $5,500 this year, but negotiations brought that down to a maximum of $3,284. So friends, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that all Americans should be able to receive a $3,200 stimulus check just like Alaskan residents? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Friends, the key word for this video today is Maui. If you would like to enter today's Walmart gift card giveaway, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below this keyword, which is Maui and additional keywords of any video of mine that you watch. And do make sure friends that you are subscribed to my channel. So the Inflation Reduction Act is also set to lower prescription prices for millions of people in the United States. But according to NBC News, experts fear that companies could exploit loopholes in the bill, ultimately keeping prescription costs high for many individuals. The law takes aim at insulin costs, caps out-of-pocket spending for Medicare beneficiaries, and allows the federal government to negotiate prices on the costliest prescriptions. It will also require prescription makers to pay a rebate to Medicare if they raise prices too sharply. These provisions will not be implemented all at once. Instead, they will go into effect gradually over the next several years, beginning with insulin price caps and rebates in 2023, out-of-pocket caps in 2025, and finally drug negotiations in 2026. Because of the four-year gap before the law is fully implemented, policy and legal experts fear that companies may have ample time to go on the offense and figure out ways to sidestep provisions. Many experts said they expect to see more companies release generic versions of their medications in the next coming years. This is to avoid the health laws provision that allows the government to negotiate prescription prices. Generally, generic prescription drugs help bring down the cost when they are offered at a lower price. It is more difficult to maintain a high price on the brand name version. But despite more generics on the market, Experts say that American consumers likely will not see huge discounts on the prices for those prescriptions. Well, my awesome and amazing dear friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this afternoon. Thank you, my friends, for joining me here every day and watching all of the videos I post. I greatly appreciate all of you for doing so. To say thank you, I'll be announcing a winner for the Walmart gift card giveaway in a video later today. So friends, please stay tuned for that video. Thank you and have a wonderful and blessed Tuesday afternoon. One in the White House is confused or shocked by how bad things have gotten. They know exactly how we got here because they did it. Because every step they took along the way was a deliberate attempt to reject common sense and manipulate the people into accepting a radical economic agenda. Well, in July of last year, President Biden insisted that inflation was transitory and that if we could just bring on 
a little bit more time and a little bit more effort and hang in there a little bit longer, you know what, everything was going to be just fine. He didn't want the people to panic and start questioning the narrative that the White House was pushing forward every single day. Surprising no one, that argument didn't fly. The people weren't buying it. So in October, suddenly, not only was inflation a problem, but guess what? It was former President Trump's fault. That's right. Not this administration's fault, not the Democrats, not President Biden. It was President Trump's fault. Well, the American people, they weren't having that either. They weren't buying that line. And over the next five months, the COVID-19 pandemic, so-called global challenges, supply chains, and of course, Vladimir Putin, and then Senate Republicans, everybody took a turn in the blame game seat for President Biden and the White House. It was everybody's fault but theirs. Isn't that absolutely amazing? Just amazing. The people in control of everything, the House, the Senate, the executive branch, the White House, controlling it all. They had nothing to do with this so they want you to believe. Well, yes, indeed, they had everything to do with it. So last month, the Democrats had exhausted this rotation of villains, as they like to call it. Well, they panicked, and they decided once again that they had to just go out here and convince the American people 